Hi Grade 7, and welcome back to Miss Chua's channel. In today's video, we're going to learn how to convert between fractions and decimals. Let's get started! Have you ever used your calculator and just got a really long decimal number like this one? Ugh. Well, when we have numbers after a decimal point that repeat in a pattern like this one, or this one, these are called repeating decimals. But, as you know, sometimes the decimal does end like this one, and this is called a terminating decimal. Well, because it terminates, which is just another word for ends. So sometimes fractions can be written as decimals that are repeating decimals, and sometimes they are terminating decimals. All right, so let's take a look at our first example for this video. We're gonna write fractions or mixed numbers as decimals. So if we look at this first one for letter A, it's the fraction or the mixed number negative two and one quarter. And we wanna write this as a decimal. Now, we do know that the negative two in front is the whole number. So we know that this decimal number is definitely gonna be negative two point something. Now, hopefully you have already memorized that one quarter as a decimal is 0 0.25. But just in case you haven't memorized that yet, um, let's do this. Um, the long way just to see how it works for something easier and then that way you can apply it to something more difficult. So the fraction 1 over 4. The idea is we want to try to make the denominator um, a power of 10. So a power of 10 could be 10, 100, 1000, etc. So 1 over 4. Can we make this equal to another fraction with a denominator of 10? Well, no we can't. Alright, so can we make it an an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100? Well, yeah, 4 can be 100 if I multiply by 25. And whatever I do to the bottom, I gotta do to the top. So I also multiply this by 25. So in turn, we get 25 out of 100. But we do know that this fraction is actually, or said as 25 hundredths. Remember that th at the end? And we know that 25 hundredths is just written as 0.25. So therefore, we can show that negative 2 and 1 quarter is equal to the decimal negative 2.25. And this one here is called a terminating decimal because it doesn't repeat. So it just stops right there. So we have a terminating decimal. All right, taking a look at letter B, we want to do 5 over 11 as a decimal. So this fraction is less than one, so we know that our decimal number is definitely going to be zero point something. So we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did before. It's always easier when we try to convert into decimals to make it a fraction over 10, 100, or 1,000. Um, that's our first step to make it easier. So now, five over 11. Can I make this with a denominator of 10? Mm, well, I can't do that. All right, let's try 100. Well. If we think about the multiples of 11, 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, 66, 77, 88, 99, oh, we, that doesn't work because we won't get 100. So powers of 10 aren't going to work. So if we can't make this fraction with a denominator of powers of 10, then unfortunately, if we do this by hand, we have to do long division. So we have to set up our long division problem. So we're gonna do five divided by 11. Now, 11 doesn't go into 5, so what do we need to do? Is we're going to put a decimal beside our 5 and add a 0 because 5.0 is the same as 5. Then we can bring that decimal number up. All right, well, 11 does go into 50, so it goes into it 4 times, and then 4 times 11 is 44. Then we subtract and we get 6. And then we need something to bring down, so we can bring down a 0. So how many times does 11 go into 60? Okay, 5 times, so then 11 times 5 is 55. All right, we subtract, it's 5, bring down another 0. Whew, we get 50. And then how many times does 11 go into 50? Well, 4 times, and then we get 4 times 11, 44. Then we subtract 6, okay, bring down the 0, okay. And how many times does 11 go into 60? Okay, 5 times, and we get 55 again, and we subtract, and we get a 5, and we bring down, and we get 0. Whew. So do we notice that every time we do the subtraction, we're getting 60, then 50, then 60, then 50, and that's repeating? 
So this is going to tell us that this decimal number is going to continue on and on and on and on forever. It's going to be 0 0.4545445, blah, 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 blah. So what's the part that's repeating? Well, the 45 is being repeated. Now, we don't want to write 0 0.4545445 forever because that would be silly. So what we do is we draw a bar over the part that is repeating. So the part that's repeating is the 45. So we draw the bar on top of the 45 and we get 5 over 11 is equal to 0 0.45, but the bar is over top of the 45. And of course, this one is a repeating decimal. All right, so here are two questions for you to try out on your own. Don't use a calculator to do these. Try to do these by hand, and then you can use a calculator to check your work. But no calculator for right now. So let's take a look at our second example for today's lesson. We're going to look at writing a terminating decimal as a fraction. So the instructions say that we are going to write the decimal as a fraction or a mixed number in simplest form. Simplest form just means that we want to make sure our fraction is reduced or as small as possible. So for letter A, we have negative 3.1. So if we're writing this as a fraction, we know this is going to be a mixed number. So we know that the whole number is going to be negative 3. And then for the fraction part, we've got 0.1. Now this 1 is in the tenths place. So remember when we were back in like elementary school, if it's in the tenths place, it's just like saying 1 over 10. So we have negative 3 and 1 over 10. Now we want this in the simplest form. Can 1 over 10 be simplified any more than this? No, it can't. So we leave it like this and that's it. This is so much easier than the last one. <laughs> so for letter B, we've got negative 10.25. So again, we've got that whole number in front. So our mixed number is going to have a negative 10 in the front and then 0.25 again. If you don't remember that 0.25 is one quarter, um, what we're going to do is we know that the 2.5 is and the five is in the hundredths place. So this means that we have 25 over 100. That's what 25 hundredths is. So then we have negative 10 and 25 over 100. Now we want to make sure our fraction is simplified as possible and 25 over 100 can be simplified because we notice that 25 and 100 they definitely can be reduced because one, they're both divisible by five. So we know that it can be made smaller. So the, lar the sorry, the biggest common denominator or the largest common denominator, um, sorry, I can't talk today. The lar greatest common factor between 25 and 100 is 25. So we can divide both by 25. So 25 divided by 25 makes one and 100 divided by 25 makes four. So now we get the fraction negative 10 and one fourth. All right, so we've got two more try questions for you. And again, you guys can do this. You don't need a calculator. So try to do these with no calculator. You can do it. All right, so let's take a look at our last example for this video. We're going to look at the table that shows the four creatures that are relative to sea level and which of the sea creatures are deeper than the whale. And we want to explain our thinking. So we can see in the table that we have all of the creatures and their elevation and it's given in kilometers. Notice that all of their elevations are negative. Well, why is that? Well, when we think about sea level, sea level is represented by the number zero. So that means anything underneath the water is gonna be represented by a negative number. So I'm gonna draw a little wavy thing here to represent my water, and this represents an elevation of zero kilometers. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to order these creatures based on their elevation so from the closest to the top of the water to the most deep part of the water or the deepest. So we can see that in the table, we have three of these values as fractions and one of them as a decimal. So whenever we're comparing numbers, it's a lot easier when they're all represented in the same way. So what we can do is change the whale into a fraction. It's the least amount of work. And negative 0.8, that's an easy one for us to convert. That's just going to be negative 8 tenths or negative eight over 10, because the eight is in the tenths place. So now we can look at our picture again. So we can put the whale and let's write it as negative eight over 10, which actually we can reduce if we wanted to, to negative four over five. Now we're gonna look at the other animals. Notice that the anglerfish is negative 13 over 10. 
So it's a lot easier if we look at this one as a mixed number. So to turn this one into a mixed number, we do it just like a normal fraction. Let's ignore the negative for now. And then we're going to make this um, a mixed number. So it's going to go, 13 goes into 10 one time with a remainder of 3. So we get 1 and 3 tenths. And then we have the negative in front. All right. So now if we think about water, if the water level is 0, that means the deeper we go into the water, the more negative we are going down, right? But that number is also going to get that's right, bigger. So the number that is the biggest is going to be the one on the bottom. The number that is the smallest is going to be the number that is closest to the water. So if we look at the angler fish and the squid, we can see that with the whole numbers, it makes it a lot easier. So after the whale, then we have the angler fish, and then we have the squid. And then for the shark, well, the shark is negative 2 over 11. And if we compare that to the whale, negative 4 over 5, well, the whale is negative 4 over 5, which is a lot closer to a hole than negative 2 over 11. So therefore, we know that the shark is the closest to the water. So we did all of that work, and now we can actually answer the question. So it says, which of the sea creatures are deeper than the whale? Well, the anglerfish and the squid. All right, so here is your last try question for this video. Um, for this try question, you may use a calculator and you're gonna be at the end of the question, it says, what is the range of elevation? And I put in that the range, if we forgot, is equal to the maximum or the largest number subtracting the minimum, which is the smallest number. So good luck with that. All right, grade seven, thanks for watching. Our first video of the year is now done.